Yeah, so I, I did cloud for a little bit. Mm -hmm. Then I went to the cloud native space because I really wanted to do Kubernetes at Canonical and mm -hmm. I kind of want to do Kubernetes. I was like, nope, this is in the, the like, if you talk to cloud nerds, the first time they saw Kubernetes, like everyone remembers. Mm -hmm. And I had the opportunity to work at Heptio for the co-founders of, co-creators of Kubernetes, two of them. Uh, so I did that for a few years and that was a huge community, right? And it was massive. Mm -hmm. And I did that for two or three years. We got bought up by VMware, helped them do that stuff. And that's where I got like my, um, that's where I learned all the cloud stuff, right? Mm -hmm. Like mm -hmm. uh, automation, like you just automate the hell out of everything, right? Um, uh, pets not, pets not cattle. Cattle not pets is what one I'll go through because there's a lot of this stuff that I feel now that I kind of coming back to the desktop, I'm mm -hmm. like, no, nah, this is what we need, right? So like the API driven self-serve model, right? The kind of composability, which is like building, you know, you, you build basic Lego kits and mm -hmm. then you put them together, right? Which you can do today, right? But it's nicer when you have a guarantee that like the hole and the peg are the same, right? You right. know, that, that, that kind of stuff. So as, um, uh, I, I left that. I did, I did VC for a bit. Uh, that wasn't for me. Um, and then I did cloud governance for a while. So learning a lot of, uh, you know, when people ask, like, for example, we made a tool that makes sure, Hey, if, if someone checks in a secret into mm -hmm. Git, delete it, uh, that, yeah, <laughs> that kind of stuff, which GitHub does automatically. If you up, if you check in your stuff, yeah, I don't, I don't think they do OBS streaming keys, but definitely your AWS creds. Amazon will automatically kill your, will disable that. Yeah, I definitely too. uploaded some yeah. API keys for different things throughout. I think I was, nice. I think I was doing. Happens to everyone, man. Don't be ashamed. I think I was doing a, yeah. No, I think also the project I was doing for the CSIRO, um, at least it was years back. Uh, yeah. And I was building some like front end for the, uh, they wanted some like farming data monitoring tool uh and i think i uploaded something for that it was it wasn't a live system so it was it was still like yeah you know in development so luckily you know but yeah. even so it's still probably not something that should be there yeah so i did that and i'm currently i kind of took a break i quit my job i wanted to decompress for a little bit mm -hmm. you know i'm privileged enough to to have some runway there yeah uh then i started you blue actually on the side i've been doing this over two years, but it was kind of like the side thing and it wasn't like very cool. And it was very impaired, very, you know, oh, a community manager is trying to make a distro. Ha ha. Like, mm -hmm. It would look exactly what you would think if you were to hear that. Mm -hmm. um, but over time I started to you know, hanging out in the Fedora discord and people were like, you know, if we did this, it could be this, it could be this, it could be this. So we started to tease it apart, make it more composable. That's mm -hmm. why it's a kit now. Mm -hmm. Right before it was basically what Bluefin is now, which is like George's vision of a desktop, right? Yeah. So it looks like freaking Ubuntu, right? Like, yeah, of course, right? Like Metallica is going to sound like Metallica too. So, um, but over time, but I didn't know how to split stuff up because I was, I'm not that, you know, I'm not an engineer. Right. Um, but as people started to show up, they're like, dude, you could do it this way. You could do it this way. I was like, cool, do a PR. Let's see what it looks like. And then one day, Josh and Alex, who are the people who figured out the NVIDIA images, right? Mm -hmm. Because it's the project is pretty cool, right? Like Fedora is going to support this. Like they have this. We're just going a little bit early. You know, it's like everyone's going to have one of these. Mm -hmm. um, but we would sit there and say, you know, theoretically, if we built the NVIDIA images in CI, your computer would only get the working one. You'd never have to build the stupid driver you know, and get that black screen or like there was an update and you didn't reboot and you launched the game and it, you know, actually, I think, I think you no, you wouldn't need to reboot because you wouldn't get the new image until you got to the, so you don't even have, you even mm. fix that accidentally. Mm -hmm. um, and when, when Josh was talking about it, I was like, Hey man, I've been down this road. Like if you, you know, this will be pretty cool, but I am telling you, inserting yourself as the place for people to report nvidia driver issue <laughs> not a not a good not a good plan for long-term mental health let me tell you about that <laughs> yeah, you know right now which is why like like we're very careful like i say alpha you know even though just by its very nature it tends to be more stable than mm -hmm. pretty much anything else uh so you know we we had to think about it and stuff but at the same time it was so cool and i had you know, I had assembled an NVIDIA machine because as a good Linux user, I've, you know, I've got all the open source now and I had this old 2080 mm -hmm. 
and I slapped it in and I was tried rebooting secure boot worked like right away. I was like, there's that's absurd. There's no way. And I, at that point, that's when, you know, you have to make an open source. Cause I didn't want to make an open source project. It's hard. You got to make governance and trust and you know, all, all the stuff I'm doing now. That's why I'm all tired. Like I didn't want to do any of that, mm -hmm. but if someone figured out a better way to do NVIDIA and that can hold you off until MVK comes out, you got to do it, mm -hmm. you know? Um, so I grab, yeah, you know, I was like, Hey, if we're going to do this, you want to do it, let's do it, you know, but we're going to have to do it right. We can't, you know, cause it is an opera, like it's an operating system on your computer. We can't, you know, what happens when people don't trust their distros and the distros do bad things. Mm -hmm. Right. So, you know, I was like, Hey, we got to make sure any secret, any certificate that we have is accounted for everything's in version control. And that's one of the nice things about also getting to go fresh mm -hmm. is you don't have to deal with any old infrastructure or migration of stuff or, mm -hmm. or any of that. So I was sitting there with my friends and I was like, man, I think I can run this thing out of GitHub. Like, I think we could run this thing out of GitHub and it would totally, totally work. The only limit is they keep 90 days of your artifacts. Uh -huh. So we can only keep 90 days of image backups for you. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, but that's actually not that bad that's because usually if you reboot and something's broken, you mm. go back a day, maybe you'll go back a week. Yeah, yeah. No, that's not mm. that big of a deal because when you, like when you update Silverblue, like locally, don't you have like, a, you have like three or four you can like roll back it to? It keeps two. Two, okay. Yeah. Two and then whatever you say, keep this one. You can keep as many as you want. Sure, sure. Well, but, assuming you have um, the hard drive space. Yeah, yeah. But I mean, there's deduplicate. It's doing a bunch of yeah, yeah. yeah there's sure, papers sure. on that. Stuff. Even so, yeah. you're gonna there's gonna be a limit at some point. Yeah, there's yeah. Especially there's if you're definitely were, a, like you don't want. To especially turn if you're like a, a laptop user, for example, and you have like a right. 500 yeah. gig hard drive. Right, right. What you want is the last working image that you have, mm -hmm. right? Maybe one that's a week or a month, and then you always want to keep the one the day you installed it because that's yeah. like a free. Yeah. It's like a free power wash <laughs> thing, which which I want to do eventually. Um, so yeah, it was like, you know, the free tier is fine. The, the, the builders are fine. The first cut, it takes about two minutes for a free GitHub runner to build the entire OS, which mm. is like really fast. Um, and then we started adding NVIDIA. The NVIDIA images take you know, any 13 to 20 minutes each. Mm. So, and then that's one for each desktop and then one for 37 and one for 38. And then once 39 comes, the nice thing about Fedora is they only support three versions, right? Mm -hmm. So when 39 comes out, we won't be growing the image space. Like we'll we'll yeah. know exactly how much disk space you need, mm -hmm. right? Because I don't want to go shopping around for resources until you know exactly how much shit you're using, right? Yeah, so yeah. yeah, that's that's the plan. Well, this sort of leads me into one of the, the questions that showed up. You're doing everything with GitHub. And I had some people being like, is GitHub like okay with you just basically running effectively a distro out of github's yeah. infrastructure yeah, we, we turn github into a operating system generator mm -hmm. yeah so again with the cloud native parts mm -hmm. is i went and added them up we've built 600 some images mm -hmm. in the course of this month because they only give me 30 days of metrics mm -hmm. um that that doesn't even register that doesn't even register anywhere mm -hmm. right it just shows you the immense scale of open source where like and someone's like, oh, no, a 600 meg ISO? You build it every day? Mm -hmm. Jeez, are they going to call you? I was like, no, they're not going to call me. The, the GitHubers I have talked to about it think it's great, though. Mm -hmm. Like, um, Because we're using it in a way that wasn't like, who knew that you could just run your entire computer just right out of there, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. um, so, so, just, so you know, that's pretty cool. Briefly explain and, and what you're I applied for a beta program mm -hmm. for open source stuff. Get us nicer builders. Mm -hmm. So can you just oh briefly God, explain to people it. who are like not super involved in that side, like what you're actually doing with GitHub here? Yeah, so what we do is we keep all of the um, container files and all of that stuff in Git. So we say, we take normal Fedora Silverblue, and then make these changes, right? Mm -hmm. And that happens over a bunch of repos, but that's not important right now. Mm -hmm. um, and then in GitHub, we there are things called actions, right? And what that does is says, every day, I want you to build this OS, sign it, and then shove it into the GitHub package registry, which is when you type that rebase command on your terminal, you're saying, I want to get the image uh, from GitHub. And mm -hmm. that happens every 24 hours. We timed it so the main image is, uh, build an hour after Fedora does, and then the NVIDIA image build an hour after that because mm -hmm. that composer you're building 
on top of the other thing. We're not remaking the NVIDIA ones from scratch. We're saying use the stuff we already did and then just add the NVIDIA drivers on top. Right. That way, when a new game controller comes out and you have that UDEV rule, we stick that way earlier in the process and that day everything just gets it, right? Mm -hmm. All the way down. Yeah, that's... So that's, that's uh, dope. 